Hi everyone, uh, this is Arpad from Starpath Academy and today I have the pleasure to talk to Mario. He runs the YouTube channel Maneco64 where he gives daily updates about markets, monetary policy, precious metals, economics and even geopolitics. If these are topics that you're interested in, I would highly recommend uh, to subscribe to his channel. I will have a link in the description uh, of this video. Mario, thank you uh, so much for being with us today. Uh, you're welcome, Arpad. It's a pleasure to come on your channel. You came on my channel last week, so we should do this more often, as you said uh, <laughs> earlier, before we started. <laughs> I'm always hope... looking forward to your analysis, daily updates, and uh, just uh, gain so much knowledge out of it. Um, and um, I think you hit on the right parts on what's happening with uh, definitely geopolitics, markets and everything you share. Um, and on that note, starting with geopolitics, um, um, what happened to the Turkish lira effectively collapsing uh, in its value and purchasing power? And uh, you shared a really great video about it and I watched it. So could you talk uh, to our viewers? What are your thoughts about what could be happening, you know, comparing the lira to other currencies, definitely in that area, and um, what has been the strategy of, um, you know, the Turkish government uh, so far? Yes, uh, I made a video maybe uh, 10 days ago or maybe less about the Turkish lira. They do have a lot of inflation in Turkey. I, I think it's over 20% and probably more. Uh, that's the official number. And uh, we're, we're told in the West, you look at the mainstream media, that uh, Erdogan doesn't like high interest rates and uh, that he's a, a dictator. And that might be so. But uh, interest rates there are 15%. And in the West, they're at zero. And our inflation rates are running at six, uh, maybe even more. Uh, our PPI, yes, the, yeah. the wholesale price is running at, uh, I think, almost 30 in Europe. So uh, I think there's a, a bit more to, to just the inflation problem in Turkey and the fact that uh, their real uh, interest rate, uh, if you take inflation at 20% and their interest rate at, at 15 is minus five. And when you look at the US real rate, it's more like minus six. Uh, of course, the, the dollar is the reserve currency of the world and the uh, People still demand a lot of uh, dollars to, to trade internationally. But uh, yeah, in, in that video, and, and I'm not a specialist uh, in Turkey, but I, I've watched some other commentators uh, talk about the fact uh, that uh, there was a coup uh, attempt yes. in 2016. Yes, I remember uh, they that. tried to, yeah, there's a lot of uh, speculation that the, the CIA might have been involved. And uh, so people forget that. And maybe, just maybe, uh, they, they're trying to get rid of Erdogan because, through the currency because they couldn't do it uh, kinetically through a coup. So what's the best way to do it? Well, you, you go after the country's currency. And uh, what that does, it de decreases the value of the currency, of course. So everything that uh, they need to people in Turkey that hold a lot of uh, or get paid in Turkish lira, uh, everything's going to get more expensive. So you, you're going to have uh, the debasement of the currency. People call that inflation. But I would say prices rise because the, the currency is attacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so one thing that uh, is interesting is that we uh, have a go at Turkey or a, a lot of uh, mainstream press like the FT, uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, about Erdogan and inflation. But uh, we don't look at ourselves in the mirror and, and see that we're running the same kind of policy as he, he is, and probably even worse, because he, uh, the central bank there probably is not, uh, I would say, printing as much money and creating such a, a huge balance sheet as we are. I noticed that their 10-year uh, yield for Turkish government bonds is like 21%. Mm. 
but uh, the government bonds in, in the UK, for example, are, are about three quarters of a percent, and, and our uh, inflation is running at five, six percent. Well, well, that's because right. the UK, the Fed, they're part of a, a club where they manage the currencies, they help each other out. But uh, I think the West is uh, trying to, um, yeah, basically tell Erdogan, uh, hold hold your horses, you're becoming too powerful. We don't want you uh, to, uh, some people say he wants to start another Ottoman empire, but uh, who knows? So I think that's what's happening there. There's more to it than just uh, the inflation in Turkey. Yes, definitely. So, I mean, just looking back, not so long ago, this happened to the ruble as well. When um, um, it fell, I think it was, again, like, 20 percent or 10 percent uh, almost overnight so we do have to take a look at these in a more dynamic global um economy but also politics and without getting too much into politics but um, definitely that gives it more perspective because you were mentioning in the video that um compared to other um countries the debt to gdp ratio of turkey is not that bad and uh, the Turkish economy is not that bad and compared to even EU countries, you know, that's supposed to be, you know, part of the euro and uh, really good countries. Turkey is not doing that bad um, when it compares to them, for sure. However, you know, a loss of faith in currency can still happen and currencies can be attacked. So that was a, that was a really good video. Um, now with... Um, Purchasing power being lost, uh, you know, um, I did uh, look at a, um, a summit recently, the Digital Asset Compliance and Market Integrity Summit uh, about uh, cryptocurrencies. And um, without getting too much in predicting or um, anything like that, I do like to listen to what other um, people have to say, especially in the media, not necessarily because of their opinion, but uh, knowing when the big guns are out, um, trying to kind of prepare or um, uh, trying to predict why they are out. And not, not so long ago, even Hillary Clinton warned us about how crypto can destabilize nations and undermine the US dollar as a reserve currency. Now, um, when these things happen, I don't necessarily want to listen to what they have to say, but they are, if they are out saying something, then that means that something is in the works, at least for me. And now um, Bitcoin has fallen in price uh, quite significantly just today. Um, what is your take on, um, on, well, not necessarily cryptos, but could do you see a future where in instead of a gold standard, you know, other countries could have a Bitcoin standard or some, um, some mix of that. Uh, do you see if, if these countries keep on printing, eventually we'll have to, in my opinion, at least we'll have to create a new standard in between nations. Um, do you see cryptos, more gold, uh, more on um, SBR standard? Uh, what is your opinion about uh, future uh, global monetary policy? I think uh, we're seeing actually a, a lot of countries uh, aggressively uh, buy gold reserves, uh, add to their gold reserves. Brazil earlier in July, July this year, uh, they increased their gold reserves by 62%. Recently, we saw Singapore increase it by 20%. We saw Serbia bringing back all their gold uh, home and saying that they're going to keep buying. And there's a, a lot of other countries, I think, like Poland. So if there will be a, a new standard, uh, I think it's going to be gold. I don't think it's going to be Bitcoin. The only country I, I've seen that is added Bitcoin or made it legal tender is El Salvador. Yes. But El Salvador is like a, a tiny little country. It had, it's not that important in the scheme of things. Uh, but if it was the opposite, 
if we had just El Salvador buying a little bit of gold and everyone else buying Bitcoin, I would understand. I, I think the game plan for the, the people who run the world, if can, they can stay in charge, I, I hope they, they don't, but uh, uh, they, they're using, um, I think the blockchain technology, they're allowing uh, the public to develop it for them mm -hmm. yeah. so that they can come and uh, it will cost them uh, almost nothing to uh to set up maybe uh like uh the di digi digital you one for example uh, uh i think the technology is all there for the blockchain already and, and uh countries or, or governments or self sovereign nations they haven't had to do anything it's been self-financed by all the uh, the crypto market and i saw an article uh today and uh Let's see, where is it? If I can find it. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's from a Chinese uh, publication and it's talking, and it's the guy, he's the head of the, uh, what's his, uh, I'll just read it out to you. Uh, it says on December 3rd, uh, 2021, Bao Forum for Chinese Entrepreneurs and the International Gold Market Annual Summit was held in Boao, the theme of this event is major changes and new patterns co-hosted by China Fortune Media Group, China Gold Association, World Gold Council, uh, and, and also Gong Shijiang, member of the party leadership group and secretary general of Xinhua News Agency. And uh, yes, uh, I'll tell you what they uh, said here. Uh, this guy, Gong Xiang, Xiang, <laughs> sorry for my Chinese, uh, he said 2021 is an extraordinary year. The century of change in the world is intertwined with the epidemic of the century under severe international political and econ economic situation. The gold market as an important part of the financial market and consumer market is at a major historical uh, juncture, digital, smart, green, and ecological have become the trend characteristics of gold development, and gold will play an important role in restructuring the world's industrial structure. So this is like a, a top Chinese official saying that. So yes, they uh, the uh, digital, uh, I guess, aspect is going to be there. It's going to continue. But uh, I, I think the backing will be... Uh, gold uh, maybe silver as well they've got the track record uh, yes gold and silver have dropped sharply in the past <laughs> like bitcoin has maybe but maybe but 25 percent i mean we see a lot of uh, these sharp moves in cryptocurrency still uh, and uh, that's not a stable store of value <laughs> and uh, right. the, yeah the other thing as well about cryptos or bitcoin even if it goes to 100 or 200,000 it's very deflationary uh so a, a, a currency or a monetary system has to be stable enough so that that money uh can be lent out so you can create some credit i'm not saying <laughs> uncontrolled credit of course but some credit but Let's say uh, if you issue a, a Bitcoin uh, bond and you have two investors buy that bond, let's say El Salvador, and then you have to pay interest in Bitcoin. So you have to earn Bitcoin, but then the price of Bitcoin keeps going up. It's going to be uh, harder and harder uh, to pay that debt. Uh, so I, I think that's... Uh, a thing that uh, is a disadvantage about Bitcoin. It might uh, be uh, very scarce, but that in, in of itself is a problem, I think. I don't know if you remember in Eastern, Eastern Europe uh, some years ago, I think 10 years or so, maybe more, uh, a lot of people uh, borrowed uh, money in Swiss francs uh, yes, because Hungary. yeah poland because interest rates are really low so they thought oh let's get a swiss franc mortgage but then their their national currencies collapsed versus the swiss franc and people defaulted on those so that that's the thing uh if you are still uh let's say running a fiat currency system and then you start it's very hard to uh 
yes, uh, to finance with Bitcoin, because if Bitcoin is going to keep going higher and higher, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a problem, just like it was in Eastern Europe some years ago with the Swiss franc uh, mortgages. Yes, I remember that very well. A lot of uh, just regular people were duped into taking out mortgages and huge loans in Swiss francs, while uh, especially I know cases in Hungary. And um, while, you know, the percentages in Hungarian foreign would have been eight, nine percent, who knows? Um, in Swiss franc, it was close to one or something like that. Not thinking where I've been, I'm not sure how the banks were able to convince regular people to take out these huge loans um, against their houses, but they did. Um, a lot of people did. And this became the, the visa crisis uh, in Hungary. And eventually, I think after the re-election of Orban Viktor, um, this, the government had to take up um, and go and actually punish the banks in some way where they would need to re, uh, re, uh, reassess these uh, loans, what they did. And it was a huge mess. And I, some they had some success in cleaning up, but so many people lost everything because of that. So very good point on that. that it's just, um, if you don't have control over it, then you, I mean, isn't that the case every time the IMF loans uh, South, South American countries some um, currency it's always almost the same they go bankrupt or they it's just huge pain for the yeah. country. yeah yeah it's almost like uh, i don't know if you've heard of uh john perkins economic uh, confessions of an economic yes, hitman yes. so what you do not remember land, his name but yeah yes. you you land brazil 10 billion dollars uh, and then you go after their currency and, and you collapse for. the economy and they can't pay it back and then uh, they'll say oh you don't have to pay it back but we're gonna take uh uh, 10,000 acres of land in the Amazon and that's how they do it or are we gonna you, you're gonna have to allow us to take over uh, to bring in our banking system uh, or you know credit cards to Brazil right. and you have you're gonna have to play the game uh, the way we want it and uh, so yeah that that's why I think cryptocurrencies uh, and Bitcoin they still have a long way to go to become uh, mm -hmm. maybe uh, a reserve assets uh, for for central banks or for national uh, national currencies. Uh, I think uh, even though we're told by a lot of uh, crypto people, and I have nothing against crypto, uh, right. I, uh, I, I'm involved uh, somewhat in it, but uh, I, I don't think it's the uh, end all. It's not going to solve the problem of that we have. I think the problem we have more is about honesty in the system. Uh, and uh, yeah. And then the crypto, at least Bitcoin does, you know, force uh, some honesty on the system. And I don't think a lot of countries are going to actually like that. So um, I don't, I mean, it would be crazy to think that, well, maybe not crazy. I mean, crazy times we live in, but um, a lot of private investors just people in you know with their computers bought a lot of bitcoin and good for them and i hope they made a lot of money and they can exit their positions however thinking that suddenly you know we decide to go on a bitcoin standard then we create these um, hyper billionaires and everybody's just fine with that uh thinking about uh, you know the u.s government or chinese government that oh yes we're going to be creating these hyper millionaires from people um and uh, they're just gonna let it roll i don't i don't think they will allow that unfortunately or fortunately who knows but it's interesting to see that you know they are attacking um cryptos in some way but also then the sector coming out and how friendly they are um towards the technology right they don't necessarily like bitcoin but the technology is there and they love the technology i absolutely love the technology aspect of it but i think they're what they are doing is they're feeding slowly the idea of that um hey cryptos are awesome but not bitcoin maybe in the future we'll come out with something better than bitcoin that will work better for you but it's just like bitcoin it's just not like bitcoin so it's interesting to see how 
um, they are branding it because in branding, there are some strategies where uh, if you're an up and coming brand, you actually want some rivalry with some really high brand because then in people's mind, they are now start comparing you to them. So um, that's quite interesting to see. Um, with, with and actually I was looking just the Bitcoin price. There has been a flash crash, really, if we could call it that. Um, just at 4 a.m. at least um, central time U.S. Uh, and a lot of, uh, with DeFi and, uh, you know, everything coming out and so many financial products based on cryptos, um, <clears throat> people are leveraged to their eyeballs. And, <clears throat> you know, I fell into that trap as well. Um, back in 2011 with silver actually trading paper silver <clears throat> back in um, Romania well it might have been even before that so um, what do you think about this new generation of traders uh, coming in with cryptos but also in the stock market to, to be honest uh, being so highly leveraged in my opinion to try to catch up with their previous generation because 2008 took uh, out that uh, took out their foundation really and now there's a lot of millennials trying to make it up in the market being leveraged to their eyeballs what is your take on that then what what should people um you know look out for well leveraged leverage is a double-edged sword uh <laughs> when when things are going up and your leverage is great but and usually it takes longer for things to go up than they do to uh, come down. They go up, there's an old saying, they go up the stairs and then they come down uh, the elevator shaft. <laughs> this right. is what it looks like we had overnight in, in Bitcoin. It dropped from around 56,000 to uh, 42,000. So a drop of 25%. So even if you're just leveraged four to one, you would have lost uh, 100% of your capital uh and uh yes bitcoin has become uh, very speculative in the, the whole crypto space uh, i told you uh, earlier before uh we started that uh i use a lot of exchanges to move some altcoins around uh, and let's say uh, exchange them for uh, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum so that I can get back into a uh, fiat currency. And I see uh, these signs. Oh, uh, you can trade this uh, 10 to one, you know, and it's crazy. I, I, I will not touch that, of course. And, and uh, because, yeah, as I said, leverage is very dangerous. And uh, it's uh, ironic because I started looking at Bitcoin back in 2012. And I started looking at sound money even before the 08 crisis. And when I heard about Bitcoin, I said, well, this is a good thing. They want to uh, build another system that is decentralized, that it's a sound money system, not like the one we have now, fiat currency system with leverage. But <laughs> unfortunately, the people participating, uh, people always uh, get greedy and uh, it's uh, going down the same path, uh, unfortunately. Uh, as fiat currency and uh yes uh I, I think a lot of people probably have been taken out by this uh, sharp drop but if you bought let's right. say one bitcoin at sixty thousand dollars you put sixty thousand dollars yes it's painful it's now worth what 47 i don't know where it is right now you've lost uh thirteen thousand but you you haven't lost uh, uh the whole your whole right. 60,000 because you didn't leverage so that's the key uh you you uh you live yeah it, it's a double edged sword as i said yes and also the markets have been falling so um and uh, at least my generation or people younger than me a lot of people i'm not sure of exact numbers but i think I don't know if there's a, have been any time in history how many how much retail investors are in the market now um, with technology being more interesting and just to being able to trade options with your phone and um, you know definitely Robinhood, Webull, and all these apps came out and a lot of people just uh, went into the market and they're 
they're trying to catch up. So what do you think, of course, it's always hard to predict, but um, what do you think caused the, um, the recent fall in the stock market? It's, um, it, could it be another Greek letter uh, virus that's happening? Could it be um, uh, Jay Powell and his gang uh, stepping back? Or um, what, what is your take or what, at least what is your feel about what could be happening in the equities market? Well, when you look at the chart of the NASDAQ going back like 10, 15 years, or even S&P and Dow, it, right. it's it, it's like crazy. And the, uh, the other day, or even, well, actually this morning, I was looking at a chart and I said, when will the Fed uh, eventually say we have to let this go? So it could be that. It could be the, the Greek letter of the alphabet uh, with the, the small O, because I think Omega is the big O and Omicron yes. is the small. Uh, it could be, uh, I've seen that uh, big uh, executives from big corporations are unwinding or selling a yes, lot of their positions as well. And 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 uh, I sent you a link here on the chat. I don't Would know you if like you me to share, share um, my yeah. screen and talk about yeah. it? Yeah, so yeah, because this is important. It, it, and the other thing as well with millennials, I, I see there's a new way of... Uh, trading and i don't even say it investing uh it's all on social social media trading and like so people don't call a broker a qualified broker anymore and talk to them yes. uh, about That's investments the they, 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 they they just follow uh people and they say oh this guy's buying this we're gonna buy this social it's like crazy. investing right or yeah i mean it's, it's social speculation i would say so yeah this is uh from the felder report so as you can see here, uh, margin uh, margin debt to GDP is the highest uh, it's been, well, since uh, 1959. <laughs> and it's even higher than it was. Uh, it was only 1% of GDP uh, during the dot-com bubble. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, so now we're at unprecedented levels. Uh, it doesn't sound like much 4%, but <laughs> it's quite a bit. 4% of GDP is four times more there's more uh, four times more uh, margin right now than there was at the top of the uh, uh, dot com bubble. So uh, we were saying, and margin is just leverage. So right. it, it's really dangerous. And uh, maybe Bitcoin is a an omen, <laughs> uh, a signal. I don't know. And I don't know if Powell wants to bring everything down. He could, because. Uh, the uh, globalists, the central bankers, they want to own everything. So in the last eight, 18 months or so, uh, they saved the system in March and then they gave people loads of easy credit, st right. stimulus checks, uh, mortgage rates have gone down and people have borrowed and borrowed even more. And now they're leveraged up here. So <laughs> if they want to take over those last assets, uh, let's say the top, 10% That's or even how you the pull top it in. Yeah, yeah, you pull yeah, like you like you said uh you said in uh, the interview I did with you and, and then you hyperinflate and then yeah. you control everyone. And then nobody has anything. That's right. Left because mm. even the ones with assets will have to liquidate to cover their um, their debts. That's right. Uh, yes, it, it it is scary when I mean <laughs> just looking and i love it because you bring historical knowledge into this and sometimes when i see I look at charts i don't necessarily go that far back but um it does it does give you perspective of what, what's happening and you know can you point at any spike in this chart here where it hasn't come down you know and why do you think it has come down and when did it come down right 2009 yeah um, <laughs> 2000 even yeah even in 19, so. 19 even 1987 there just before 89 uh, there's the 87 crash you see here right yeah this one right here so, yeah uh, a bit oh just oh, the, just be a uh, 1989 there just before yeah. it spiked and came down I mean, so <laughs> historically looking back they don't even look troubling <laughs> compared yeah, but, to what, uh, we, what we have went into since early 90s yeah, I, I mean, it, if there is, if this is the beginning of a massive uh, crash, I guess that uh, margin to debt to GDP could go back 
below 1%, that would be catastrophic for, for the whole financial system because it's so leveraged for the whole economy. Uh, I've noticed, uh, for example, yeah, it wasn't a great week for the stock market. They dropped like 4%, I think, uh, the big indices, uh, around 4%. But one thing I noticed is the, the small caps, the Russell 2000, that was down 11% this week, which is quite, quite a lot. And while I'm sharing, I just wanted to show this chart, the 10 years, and this is from Kitco. Um, so because I do want to ask about leverage, what about leveraging gold? What about using credit to buy silver, you know, even physical silver? Um, and before you answer that, I did want to say it, it, it be when I, I mean, I'm not even sure when I got in, but I was definitely really excited about silver during this peak right here at the beginning of this chart. And I was buying paper silver leveraged and the leverage wasn't that bad. I think it was 25% uh, basically one to four leverage. And it took pretty much everything that I made um, on going up it everything evaporated. Um, and that would have been pretty much the same if I had physical silver because I would still need to sell it all to cover uh, my debt. And uh, boy, did I learn a good lesson. But luckily, I did, I think, did come out like 5% out of the whole trade and everything. It was just not even worth uh, worth my time at, at that point, you know. And yeah, then I, I get my lesson. But a lot of people are getting excited about silver, gold, hyperinflation and that sort of stuff. Um, do you have a couple of words for them if they are buying even physical assets with leverage? Yeah, I get asked a, a lot of times, um, why, if interest rates are so low, why not borrow and buy, buy gold? And uh, I said, you can do that. But uh, they, they can take you out. They could have a really sharp drop in gold and silver, like we've seen before over a Sunday and a Monday. And, uh, and the point about gold and silver is that their insurance, monetary insurance. So why would you want to uh, borrow money right. to, to, to have money? So uh, for me, uh, I think, uh, yeah, you try to save some fiat and then you, when you have enough, start buying uh, precious metals, physical gold and silver. I would stay out of leverage because uh, they, even if you have hyperinflation, the currency collapse, what if you uh, can't afford to, uh, you can only afford to buy food and pay your rent, and then right. you can't afford to pay your loan on your gold and silver, they're gonna, you're gonna have to give up your gold and silver. So that's the other thing you need to think of in the hyperinflation uh, I spoke to, uh, I think you've spoken to him as well, the guy from uh, Lebanon, uh, the guy in Beirut. Uh, there's no, Ali. Uh, yeah, Ali, yeah, yeah, I forgot his name, sorry. There's no currency, there's no money. So, right. uh, just no, uh, yeah. so how are you going to, even if the currency is collapsed, and, but you're still going to have the debt. <laughs> so... Right. And, and these things can take time, you know, gold jump might jump up, but uh, maybe it's illiquid or maybe it jumps up too late. And by that time, mm. the currency there, um, there could be a, um, a run to cash before that. And that run to cash might, might last a year and you will, you might need to cover your debt. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to ask about your opinion about that. And um, what is it? Well, based on that, what is your opinion about these recent moves in gold? Uh, I think the, the market started um, crashing first, but actually gold was going up initially. Uh, then gold fell uh, a little bit. And then I think just last day and probably today, it's now uh, starting to go up. Do you think, um, and what is the best case and what is the worst case for gold um, regarding um, what Powell or um, these central bankers are, uh, are doing? Um, what, what do you see the, as the, like the whole picture and some possibilities for gold uh, going up or down? Yeah, I, um, 
I, <laughs> I'm not really concerned uh, about what gold will do in the next few years. Maybe in the short term, yeah, the price fluctuates, but I, I don't see um, the central bankers, Powell or uh, Lagarde or Bailey, Bank of England, uh, Kuroda, Japan, being able to uh, ever raise rates uh, to stop the inflation. Because if they do, everything collapses and you, you get like, like we're talking about, maybe they do want that. But when, when that happens, uh, you have something called counterparty risk. A lot of companies are going to fail. Uh, even the U.S. government could fail because they won't be able, you know, because the uh, uh, bond yields, treasury bond yields will go up and they, they won't be able, they could print to pay off the debt. And, but that's going to, hyperinflate it and it's going to make the dollar worth less so I, I think they're cornered so even in a deflation deflationary collapse uh gold gold will do well the gold did very well during the great depression if you if you had gold or silver i'm not sure what the price of silver did but silver was was money back then so if you had money you you were doing well people basically uh soup kitchens they didn't have money and uh there's so much credit that uh, a lot of people who think they they're wealthy if you do have a, a an implosion if they do decide to raise rates and go to to uh, fight the inflation then people's wealth will evaporate and the only thing left will be like uh gold and silver and physical of course and uh well, the and the other thing is that uh, they they don't uh, taper or they don't raise rates, so they're going to keep inflating even more. So I think gold and silver should do well. And uh, I I saw an article yesterday. One of the Bank of England officials he came out at a speech yesterday and said because of this uh, Greek uh, <laughs> Omicron. Uh, they might uh, delay raising rates in December. And this guy was is known as to be very hawkish. So they're already using that to backtrack. So yeah, uh, I'm very comfortable with it, uh, uh, holding uh, gold and silver. And, and like you said, uh, you will need to decide when things get really crazy. Uh, you have to track the purchasing power of gold and silver versus other things, not versus the fiat currency so yeah right it's always funny because a good excuse always comes just around the corner before, before they would have to um well we're going back to normal we're going back to normal yeah market wise we're going to be raising interest rates tapering um oh no look at this new greek letter that just came out well we, our yeah. hands are tied now right <laughs> yeah but so, and the thing is for emerging market countries they're not part of the the club right <laughs> they can't do that because a lot of countries like turkey uh, right, i know right. they cut rates recently but they've been raising rates even uh, south korea i saw that they've raised rates from half a percent in august to one percent now and, and their cpi uh came out recently uh, it was expected at 3.1 percent it came out at 3.8 so even if the fed uh, and other central banks, major central banks, start raising rates, it doesn't mean that they're going to stop prices rising because the inflation has been created already. If we look at inflation as the uh, creation of uh, fiat currency and credit. All right. We have already more enough um, money or <laughs> currency to hyperinflate. It's just not moving at the fast speed yet but we do have more more than enough to hyperinflate if it uh, would start move or already so um yeah well um thank you very much for joining do you have any um thoughts uh, that you would like to share with the audience uh today yeah leverage i think is really important and uh <laughs> especially with what happened uh, to bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the last 12 hours yes try to uh, be careful with leverage if you're going to trade uh, I, I think if you're going to invest it's completely different uh, you, you you buy outright 
But if you're going to trade, yes, be careful with leverage. That's what I would say. And for gold and silver, look at it as insurance. Uh, you, you might want to play around with it, the paper gold and silver, but that's not real gold and silver. Thank you very much. So everyone, um, if you're interested in great uh, um, <laughs> analysis, uh, daily updates, uh, be sure to follow Maneco64 on YouTube channel, uh, on his YouTube channel, and I will have uh, a link in the description. Mario, thank you very much for uh, being on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for having me.